I cannot tell you guys how out of practice I feel sitting here and filming because I feel like I haven't filmed one of these videos in weeks. I did do a QA before I left Spain, but that took me kind of a week to edit and upload. Then I was gone for a week. And since I came back, I have just been catching you up on all my Spanish shopping vlogs. So the last time I sat here and filmed a video like this, I had my cooling on and I have my heating turned on. So a lot has changed, but I hope you guys have been well. I hope you enjoyed coming to Spain with me. I had so much fun filming those vlogs. Speaking of which, this is going to be kind of the last installment to my Spain shopping vlogs because there were a handful of new luxury launches that I had a chance to look at while I was there, but I could not squeeze everything into those shopping vlogs and you know vlogs are a great way for me to give you a little preview a little sneak peek of some new launches but they really don't give me the chance to dive deep i just don't have the time in a vlog to spend minutes reviewing a new piece so today that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be discussing the latest launches from brands like cartier Bulgari, chanel even hermes some of these we briefly discussed in the vlogs but i did want to share a little bit more information with you and also my honest thoughts because some of these new launches are really quite exciting for full winter. So if you'd like to see the latest luxury launches from some of our favorite brands that you should be able to find in store in the coming weeks, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. You may recall that the first store I went to in Spain was Loewe and when I was discussing my experience and everything I got to try on and see at Loewe, I really briefly touched on the fact that the Loewe puzzle bag is being discontinued which was kind of shocking to me because the Loewe puzzle bag is the piece that has put Loewe on the map and I think there is a reason for it. I think the original Loewe puzzle bag is an incredible basic and I mean that in the best sense of the word. I think it's an incredible staple basic bag to have in your collection. If you are new to luxury fashion, but even if you're not, even if you're a seasoned luxury collector who has been around the block, I still think that the puzzle bag could fill a gap in your collection. If you're looking to add a piece to your arsenal that is a workhorse bag, something that is really relaxed, really laid back, casual, yet it does look really expensive and really beautifully crafted, the Leve puzzle bag was a great option, but it is a bag that's being discontinued. Well, it's slowly being replaced by the so-called Edge bag, but if you have never heard of the Loewe puzzle bag, it was, I think it launched in 2014, and I remember it was the first bag designed by J.W. Anderson when he first took over Loewe. Now he's the creative director, and he has been for almost the past 10 years, even though Loewe is a brand that has been around a lot longer. I do think that it is J.W. Anderson's creative direction and his aesthetic that transformed the brand and what Loewe at this point is so incredibly well known for. But a little hint, if you love the idea of Loewe, but you feel it's overpriced, or if you're not willing to spend that much money on Loewe pieces, you should look at J.W. Anderson's online because the pieces are not identical. But I feel like anytime he launches something really popular through Loewe or with Loewe, he will do something that is kind of similar in his own range. So while there isn't a, technically a dupe for the puzzle bag in his own collection, there are pieces that resemble the puzzle bag, even the squeeze bag, and a lot of the things that Loewe is known for. Anyway, I digress. The Loewe puzzle bag was the first bag that he designed for Loewe, and it has been incredibly popular. Almost anytime I do a QA, I get questions asking me if I would buy the Loewe puzzle bag, and if I had the need in my collection, I certainly would. Personally, I have tried on the largest size of the puzzle bag, which is the extra large. The puzzle bag does come in five different sizes. There is a mini, a small, a medium, or a classic puzzle bag. There is a large, and then there's also an extra large, which the extra large I did try and I really liked, but I think I have other more casual bags that personally I prefer the look of. But if you're looking for something that is 
more of a classic tote bag shape. The puzzle bag is a great one for you to look into, or it was a great bag for you to consider because the puzzle bag, what made it really unique, what made it kind of stand out from the crowd other than the fact that it was really a bag that was kind of, not a lot of brands were doing this really user-friendly workhorse bag with that luxury touch, but what made the puzzle bag incredibly unique is this almost origami-like structure. So the original Loewe puzzle bag was made up of nine individual pieces of leather that were masterfully blended to create more of a uniform geometric shape that was incredibly malleable because obviously there were all these individual layers that were stitched onto a larger piece of leather that allowed this bag. It allowed each and every single piece to move on their own yet the whole bag moved together. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it was really unique. The structure, the way this bag fell and dipped, there was something really elegant and really effortless about it. So this was a really popular bag and it definitely has my seal of approval for whatever it's worth, but it is being redesigned in the form of the edge bag. So from the far, it's going to look really similar, except it doesn't look quite as refined. And the reason is that they reduced the number of pieces that the bag is going to be made up of. And instead of them being precisely puzzled together from the individual pieces, they are kind of stacked on top of each other and they are just stitched down around the edges, which I assume is where the name edge comes from. And you wouldn't think that this would make that big of a difference, but it really does, especially when you look at this bag up close and personal, it looks a lot less refined, a lot less elegant, a lot less luxurious. It just kind of looks like a run of the mill bag, which the puzzle, the original puzzle wasn't, but the Loewe puzzle bag isn't the only classic piece that is being updated for the current season because we are getting a new take on the at this point iconic and in my humble opinion extremely overdone Cartier love bracelet. Now I always get criticism when I talk about the love bracelet. It is a piece that is really widely loved and I can completely understand the hype. It's something that I did buy into myself. I clearly love this design enough to buy bracelets and rings from this range. But at this point, I do think that this particular collection is quite overdone. And while I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the designs, I don't think that it should remain the default. I feel like anytime someone who is into luxury fashion is ready to buy themselves a piece of fine jewelry, they automatically go to Cartier without considering anything else. They don't consider even any other ranges from Cartier. They automatically go to the love range and they want to add a love bracelet or a love ring to their collections, which there's nothing wrong with. I just feel like when you're spending this much money on a piece, it's good to buy something that is either incredibly unique, something that's not run of the mill, something that you won't see on every other person in some shape or form, or that you're buying something that is incredibly high quality. And in my opinion, the Cartier Love Bracelet doesn't meet either one of these requirements. Obviously, if it brings you joy, if it's something that makes you incredibly happy, if it holds a sentimental value, you go for it. But personally, I would much rather spend over $7,000 on something that is either more intricate, more special, something that is a little bit better quality or features a technique or craftsmanship that you won't find anywhere else. But if you're a fan of the Love Bracelet, which was designed in 1969, and I do have a deep dive on the Love Range, if you'd like to learn about the history and the heritage of this piece, I will make sure to have my deep dive link down below for you. But long story short, it's a piece that's been around since 1969. It was designed in New York. And what made this piece incredibly special is that it was the first of its kind. It was the first piece by an exclusive prestigious jewelry house that wasn't meant to be worn as part of a set. You know, back in the day, people were really into their matchy matchy sets. So when people went to a prestigious house, as prestigious as Cartier, it was kind of expected that you would buy not only a bracelet, but you'd also buy the matching ring, the matching necklace, a pendant, an earring to go with a specific outfit, a specific bag, a specific pair of shoes, or you'd buy this set for a specific occasion. Well, Cartier was the first 
brand that realized that there might be a need for something a little bit more universally flattering. Anyway, I feel like at this point you are going to be familiar with the Cartier Love bracelet. And if you are, if you're a big fan of Cartier, you'll be happy to hear that they are launching it in a new brushed finish in yellow gold and white gold and these pieces are not going to be any more expensive than the original love pieces they only come in the original width in either yellow or white gold they don't come in their rose gold which personally is my favorite shade from Cartier and they don't come with diamonds or in the cuff version only in the original design which you wouldn't think that the finish only changing the finish would make that big of a difference, but I do think it seemed a lot more subtle in a weird way. And obviously the Cartier love pieces are known for getting scratched really fast and really easily, but it wasn't like wearing an old worn Cartier love bracelet that really soft matte finish made it seem a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more unique, a little bit less flashy in a weird way but I didn't buy either one and as soon as I left the store I was like okay great that I didn't get sucked in but I did really like it so if you are a Cartier fan if you already have a stack going or if you're looking to build a stack this might be something nice and something special to add to your collection because I think it would look incredibly nice being stacked with with your already existing Cartier love pieces so it's just something fun and different for you to consider. Let's move on to another jewelry house, but this time we're not actually going to be talking about a piece of jewelry from them. Instead, I wanted to introduce you to their latest bag launch, and the brand that we're going to be discussing is Bulgari. Now, Bulgari is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. I feel like the reason the Cartier Love Reset is so popular is because it's kind of bland. You know, it's universally flattering. It's kind of simple, streamlined. It doesn't have a really strong point of view. You can tweak it and adjust it with other pieces and depending on what you style it with, it will go with anything and everything. While Bulgari is nothing like that. Bulgari has a really strong aesthetic and a really strong point of view. It's not really for you if you like something subtle and understated, but if you like something really rich and bold, Bulgari is a brand that I think you would really enjoy. Now, obviously their collections also range. It all depends on which collection you buy into because they do have collections that are a little bit more understated than others. But across the board, I would say that Bulgari is for those who are looking to make a statement with their pieces. And if you want to know more about Bulgari, I will make sure to have my brand deep dive link down below for you, which at this point is a couple years old. So maybe it's something that I should update. But one thing that I have to say about Bulgari is that their bags are not only beautifully made, but they are also incredibly reasonably priced. So if you are looking to buy yourself a designer bag that obviously as long as you appreciate the aesthetic of Bulgari, but a designer bag that you won't see on every other person, something that is beautifully crafted, something that will add value to your collection and will not feel redundant or overdone, Bulgari is a great brand to look into. So it's not only their jewelry that I would consider looking at, but also their bags because the quality of their bags, the craftsmanship, the materials used, the designs are really, really exquisite. And the latest addition to the Bulgari bag collection is the Bulgari Roma bag. Now, Bulgari is an Italian brand and they are incredibly proud of their Italian heritage. It's something that to this day they go back to for inspiration. So as the name suggests, this bag is inspired by Rome and it is a really traditional ladylike structured top handle bag. And speaking of the top handle, it's the handle that makes this bag stand out from the crowd because it features this really cool rounded top handle which I have never seen from any other brand and it actually has the Bulgari emblem built into the handle. Now this bag is not for you if you're looking for a bag that's really relaxed and laid back. This is incredibly sturdy, incredibly structured. This is for you if you want to look like someone who's got things figured out. Like if you were carrying this bag no one would ask you any questions. This will make you look like someone who's got it together, which I think is a great thing. It is an incredibly special bag. It is beautifully crafted. And one thing that I would highly suggest that you check out, even if you don't feel like that this bag is for you, one thing that I would love for you to just play around with is the fastening of this bag because it actually features this really cool 
press mechanism, which I have never seen from any other brand. And I think as soon as you see and play around with this bag, you'll understand what I'm talking about when I say that these bags are exquisitely crafted. I mean, the craftsmanship is just top notch. These bags feature two separate compartments both sizes because it does come in two different sizes. Both of them come with a removable shoulder strap. The smaller size I think measures 22.5 centimeters and it starts at $4,200. And then the larger one, which they call the medium size measures 28.5 centimeters and it starts at $4,700. And while we're on the topic of bags, there is another bag that we briefly discussed in my first Madrid shopping vlog, but I did want to share it again in case you didn't see that video of mine. And there are also some other finishes that this bag is being introduced in for the full winter season, which is the Chanel 22 bag. If you'd like to hear my in-depth review of the Chanel 22 bag, see mod shots, just basically learn about everything that there is to know about the Chanel 22 bag. I will make sure to have my deep dive linked up here for you. But if you already know everything about this bag, I wanted you to know that it is being introduced in some new finishes for the 23K full winter collection. So we are getting it in caviar leather, which I was blown away by. The original calfskin that the 22 bag came in, I just thought it looked almost like a trash bag. It had this really weird plasticky artificial sheen to it that I think made the bag look and feel really quite cheap. But in caviar leather, I think it looks beautiful. And I also love the fact that if you pick this bag up in caviar, the Chanel emblem will also be tone on tone. So there are a few different colors that it comes in. It's only available, unfortunately, in the mini and the classic medium size in caviar leather. But if either one of those sizes work for you, you should know that you can pick it up in black with a tone on tone black finish. You can pick it up in a burgundy color, which is the one that I shared in my vlog. But then there is also a really pretty baby pink. So if you loved the idea and the shape of this bag, but you didn't like the original finish, which I can completely understand, getting it in caviar might just be the way to do it because I actually really like what this Chanel 22 bag would be able to do for you. I think it is a really unique shape that you don't see too often from other luxury houses. And I think it stays true to the DNA of the brand while looking and feeling a lot more contemporary and a lot more young in some way. And then you can also find this bag in like, I think they call it a crumpled leather, like a wrinkled, like trashed, thrown around kind of finish, which I do not like. If you thought that the original finish looked like a trash bag, you do not want to have a look at this because it looks even worse if that's even possible. But it also comes in suede with a shearling lining, which is basically imagine a Chanel 22 bag and an Og boot having a baby this would be it. So it does come in suede with a shearling finish, which is kind of cute, but I'm not a fan of the color they chose to go with because it genuinely looks like the that really classic caramel color of the Ugg boots. They're also doing it in the original calfskin, but with a print, the camellia print, which is the print of the season, which I do not like. And it is a lot more expensive than the original 22 bag. And then they're also doing it in cashmere again with the same camellia print print, which is really quite sweet, but I am not personally a camellia kind of guy. So you have plenty to choose from, but personally, the caviar finish is the one that I was most blown away. By. Last but not least, let me quickly run you through some of the latest Hermes launches, which we don't have enough of these to do an entire dedicated what's new from Hermes update on them. So instead, I thought, let me just include them here. The first piece that I wanted to share with you, which I had a chance to see for myself in person for the first time in Madrid, is the Kelly Maxi, which is a bag that we discussed in detail in one of my recent... I can't remember which one it was, but it was a recent What's New from Hermes update. So I'll try my best to find it and link it up here in case you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on this bag. But long story short, it is an oversized Kelly bag that is technically part of the men's range, 
but I don't think it really matters. Label should not matter. You should buy whatever makes you happy and whatever works for you and for your proportions. But if you like a larger bag, perhaps if you're looking for a travel bag or an alternative to a duffel, or even if you love the HAC, but you understand that it's not the most user-friendly bag, this could be a great alternative because it is a Kelly bag that is technically in size 40. Now this is not a Kelly 40 because the Kelly 40 does exist. This is slightly different. The bag, I think it is slightly wider than a regular Kelly bag would be. What I know for a fact is that the handle is a lot more sturdy, a lot wider, and it is also a little bit shorter. It doesn't have that really high arch that the original Kelly bag does. The handle feels more like the kind of handles that you'd find on a briefcase. The hardware itself is a lot more chunky and sturdy, and instead of the bag being offered with a leather strap, it comes with a thick canvas volley strap. So if you are looking for a more oversized Kelly bag, this could be something nice for you to look into. Another collection that I first got to see in Madrid was the new Sot collection, which is the first ever breakfast tableware set. Now, I don't think it's really common for people to have different sets of tableware for different meals, but it's just kind of an interesting fact that this was designed specifically for that moment in your life for breakfast. But personally, I would buy this set or pieces from this set and I would use them whenever I'm in the mood to do so. But what I love about this collection is that it's a lot more simplistic, a lot more stripped down, a lot more minimalist compared to other Hermes tableware sets, but it still has that really whimsical, fun touch that you know and love Hermes for. It is a collection inspired by show jumping, but I think it's done in a really fun and really, just a really elegant and joyful way. So if you are looking for some pieces to bring some color into your home, I think this would be a great way to do it. My favorite pieces from this collection are obviously their mugs. You know, I'm a big fan of Hermes mugs, so I'm definitely going to buy a couple of Hermes mugs from this range. I also love the teapot, so that's something else that's on my radar. And then they also have these really cute bowls. I mean, the collection is a lot more expensive than this, but these are just some of my favorite pieces. I also love the look of these bowls that come with the lid, but I'm not really sure what I would use those for. I think if I'm not mistaken in the campaign, they put jam in those bowls, but I mean, I do eat jam every morning because I have an almond butter jam toast every single morning. But why would I want to put it in a bowl when I can just, I mean, it's, I'm the only one eating it. So I wouldn't take the jam out of the jar, put it in a bowl, then to put it on my toast for me, it would not make sense. But if you host a lot of breakfast, if you host brunch and you like to present jam in something other than the jar, I guess that's one way of doing it. Or if you have any creative ideas on how to put these little bowls to use, let me know in the comment section. I feel like you guys will have some really cool ideas that I would never think of. And then I'm trying to think what else I was going to share with you when it comes to RMS. They are doing this beautiful new engagement ring called the Kelly Baguette engagement ring. So the Kelly Baguette range is something that they started a couple of years ago. They started with a Kelly bracelet that was covered in pave baguette diamonds. Then they did a thicker Kelly ring again Pave with baguette diamonds, and then the latest addition to the collection is the Kelly engagement ring, which actually features seven diamonds. So of course it's inspired by the iconic Kelly twist closure. The sangle part of the ring, or the part of the ring that's inspired by the sangle, is covered in six pave baguette diamonds, and then they replaced the actual twist closure with a horizontally set single baguette diamond that I think has the carat weight of one. So it's a one carat diamond that sits in the middle, which I mean, it doesn't look like the most impressive engagement ring, but if you are proposing to someone who loves Hermes or if you love Hermes yourself and you're looking to treat yourself, there is this new ring, which Hermes doesn't do these solitaire rings too often. So I guess that makes it quite special. These rings, I think they are around 35 
$4,000, something along those lines. I don't think they have too many of these floating around out there. It's certainly something that you would want to custom order. So if this is something that appeals to you, just know that it is out now. And speaking of Kelly rings, there is a new Kelly ring that is a lot more budget friendly, although it doesn't come with quite as many diamonds, but it does come both with diamonds and without. Without, I think this ring is just over $5,000 and then with Pave diamonds, it's just over 10,000, which if you love the idea of the Kelly ring, but you don't want to get something that is so popular and again is becoming a little overdone, this would be a good way of doing it because it is kind of a more fluid, more modern interpretation of the Sangos and the Kelly twist closure, which I really quite like. Personally, I don't think that this shape would work for me, but if you love rings, this would be something really fun and new for you to look into. And I think it makes a lot more statement than just a simple Kelly ring would, which you can get, but I would suggest stacking it with some other pieces, whereas this one would make a statement in and of itself. And my friends, this concludes today's video on all the latest luxury launches for fall winter 2023. I hope you guys enjoyed this little news update from me. I usually only do these type of videos when it comes to new Hermes launches, but I figured why not discuss some of the new launches that I got to see in Spain. If you'd like me to continue making these videos, I could do one of these every month or every other month or just every season. If that's something that you would like to see from me, make sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I really appreciate you guys being here and watching and I cannot wait to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.